Are you interested, but perhaps a bit intimidated about learning to ferment your own foods? Well, today I wanna to show you a super simple and super versatile recipe that was actually the recipe that helped me first get my feet wet and get over my initial fears of fermentation. But first off, my name is Janelle and this is our homestead classroom. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if you've been around before, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you in my kitchen today. To start, I have to admit that I too was initially a bit intimidated about fermenting my own foods. My first fermentation kit and recipe book were a Christmas gift and it took me over a year and several YouTube videos to finally give it a try. But if you saw a recent video about how to start a pantry and you made it all the way to the end, you may have heard me mention that in many cases, I actually prefer fermenting over canning or other food preservation techniques. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, number one, it it's just more accessible to more people, in my opinion. It requires less expertise and less equipment than canning, and the equipment it does require is also less expensive. Second, when I'm short on time or just have a particularly small harvest, with pretty minimal effort, I can get a ferment going and then get on with my busy day. And finally, which this is probably the, the biggest deciding factor for me, are the health benefits of fermentation. Sure, making a quick pickle is also really easy, but you're not gonna get those great gut bacteria that you get out of fermentation, and it's also not gonna last nearly as long. And that reminds me of a couple things that I think anyone interested in fermenting should know. First, fermented foods are not shelf stable. After the initial fermentation period, they are going to need to be kept in a refrigerator. But as long as your jar does not become contaminated by anything, they are going to last in the refrigerator for a very long time. So this is why you always want to make sure to use a clean utensil when you're dishing up your ferments. As long as nothing else gets in that jar that could potentially contaminate it, they're basically going to last until you no longer like the texture of them. Similar to a sourdough starter, when you put fermented foods in the fridge, it doesn't actually stop the fermentation process. It just slows it way down. So those foods are gonna continue to ferment just very, very slowly. And at a certain point, the texture is gonna become less desirable to you. For certain vegetables, like say cucumbers or green beans, that might be just a few months, but for others like onions and cabbage, it could be up to a year. This recipe comes from a book called Fermented Vegetables by Kirsten and Christopher Shockey. And if you've been watching our videos since the early days, back before our six month hiatus, and were one of the maybe 40-ish folks who made it to the end of our onion harvesting video, then you would have actually seen me make this once before. But there's a couple of reasons why I really wanted to give this recipe its own video. First, it's just so simple and it makes for such a versatile condiment. Aside from our fermented hot sauce, this is our most reached for ferment in the fridge. The other reason is that since filming that video, I actually picked up a tip that I think greatly improves upon how, how these fermented onions turned out. And I really wanted to be able to share that tip with you, which we'll get to very soon. But first, we need to gather our ingredients for the recipe. So let's head on down to the pantry to get our onions. We're a little past the middle of March at the time of filming this video, and I'm actually just about ready to transplant this year's onion crop out into the garden. But the onions that we still have in storage, or at least the red ones, we ran out of our yellow onions a couple months ago and have just been supplementing with our Azure Standard order from the restaurant supply store. But the red onions that are in here still have been here for almost nine months now, which means they're really nearing the end of their storage life and are gonna start deteriorating pretty quickly. And that's yet another reason why I really wanted to share this recipe with you today, because this recipe is a fantastic way to use up some of your onions that are nearing the end of their storage life and get a whole nother year out of them in the fridge. The recipe in the book is written for a quart size jar. 
And obviously you can feel free to scale this recipe either up or down depending upon the how big a batch you want to make or just however many onions you want to try to use up. But the important thing for me is that I want to use a jar with a wide mouth on it. And that's simply because the fermentation kit that I use, which is from a company called Mason Tops, utilizes uh, wide mouth lids. The other thing is that you want to make sure that your jar is good and clean. You don't necessarily need to sterilize it like you would for canning, but you do want to give it a wash with some nice hot soapy water. Now, this recipe has just three simple ingredients. As with any form of lacto-fermentation, you are going to need salt. And ideally, that's going to be a non-iodized salt. This is because iodine can sometimes inhibit the fermentation process. The other reason is because iodized salt, like your typical table salt, has been processed in a way that removes all other minerals from the salt. And I prefer to use a more mineral rich salt because I want those additional minerals in my diet. So generally I'm going to go with some form of sea salt, but you could also use uh, like a mined salt, something like Redmond Real Salt or a pink Himalayan. If you happen to have non-iodized canning and pickling salt on hand, you could also use that. But I will caution you that I've been warned that it can lead to an overly salty flavor in your ferment simply because there's no other minerals left to sort of round out the flavor of that sodium chloride. You're also going to need limes, the zest of one and the juice of three. And for me, I think the limes might be the most genius part of this recipe. If you've ever tried making sauerkraut using just cabbage and salt, then you might know that Creating enough brine to completely submerge your cabbage can be a little tricky and quite frankly pretty tiresome. But in this recipe, the juice from the limes is going to combine with the liquid that's extracted from the onions and give us just a bit more volume. And obviously we're going to need our red onions. The recipe calls for three red onions, but it doesn't actually specify what size of onion. And as we all know, they can vary quite a bit. So one thing that I have learned to do is to just use my jar as a bit of a measuring tool. I will go ahead and add my sliced onions to the jar until I get to the top. And then I will go ahead and slice one more full onion. And that's because by the time that we really pack our onions into the jar, we're gonna need about one more onion to make sure that the jar is totally full. Now, when it comes to slicing your onions, this is where that tip I was telling you comes in. And I actually learned this from Mike over at Pro Home Cooks. If you're at all on your own journey, like we've been to cook more from scratch, I highly recommend his channel. Although he's huge, you've likely come across his videos before. But he was making a batch of quick pickled onions. And the tip he gave is perfectly applicable in this situation as well. What he told me was that you want to make sure to slice your onions from root to tip, or if you think about it as a globe from pole to pole. Now, the reason for this is that when you slice them from root to tip, you're going to let off a lot less of those onion fumes, the ones that make us all cry, but you're also going to get a much better texture than when you do orbital slices where you go like rings. And I tried this after, actually on the very next batch after the one I filmed before, and I was so impressed by the difference in texture that I won't ever go back. I will always be slicing my pickled onions from root to tip.
Okay, now that we have our onions all sliced and our limes zested and juiced, we need to sprinkle in one teaspoon of that good sea salt. And then we want to work that in with our hands to make sure it's good and evenly distributed. This is a great chance to also make sure that you are breaking apart all those onion slices. Once it's good and worked in, you want to take a piece and give it a taste. We're looking for it to taste strongly salty, but not like you just got a mouthful of seawater. Then we need to place our onions back into the jar. Then we're going to use either our hands or one of these tamper tools. This one actually came in the Mason Tops fermentation kit that I mentioned. And we want to press these onions down to make sure that they are all submerged below the brine. And if you're finding that you're just a bit short on brine like I am today, just add one more lime's worth of juice. Now, the reason it's so important to make sure that all of the contents of our jar are sitting below the brine level is because lactoacid bacteria is actually an anaerobic bacteria, meaning it needs an oxygen-free environment to survive. So by keeping all of those contents below the brine and pushing any air in that liquid out, we're making sure that the bacteria have the environment they need to proliferate and preserve our food. And this is precisely why we are also going to use a fermentation weight. This is a glass one um, that came in the Mason Tops fermentation kit, and they're quite, quite common and very popular. But I've also heard of people using things like flat river rocks that they clean really well first. Or in the fermented vegetable book, the authors also describe a technique where you can even use just a simple plastic baggie filled with water. The last thing we need to do before our jar is ready to start its fermentation journey is to place a lid on it. Now this is again one that came in my fermentation kit and it has a one-way valve you'll see that will allow gases to escape but not allow anything to get back into the jar. There are also airlocks that some people use that sit on top of the jar. Um, you may have seen these used before for brewing beer or wine. Those are pretty common as well. But you can also just take a piece of like muslin cloth and a rubber band and put it over the top of the jar or even just a lid that fits, that fits loosely. The main thing is, is you don't want to screw that lid on so tight that the jar can't release the gases because as the lacto acid bacteria start consuming the sugars in those vegetables they are going to put off co2 and that co2 is going to need somewhere to escape to otherwise you're going to have a jar that is going to build up a lot of pressure one common practice for people that do use a regular lid is what's called burping, which is where every day or so you come and um, just release the pressure of the jar and then reclose it. Personally, I prefer something that's a little bit less hands-on that I don't have to baby quite as much through the process, which is why I really like these lids with the one-way valve. Finally, we need to put a label on our jar and then place it somewhere that is at 
room temperature, but out of direct sunlight. Most importantly, somewhere you're not going to forget about it. I know personally, I'm an out of sight, out of mind kind of person. So I have this little corner of my kitchen counter that sits below the window that keeps the jars out of the direct sunlight, but where I can make sure to check on them regularly. Now, this recipe calls for a seven to 14 day fermentation period. And that's simply gonna vary based off of the ambient temperature in your kitchen at that time of the year, as well as how firm or soft you like your pickled onions. So on day seven, I'm going to begin checking this. And if it's not ready yet, I will continue to check it every day or so until it gets to where I'm looking for it to be. Now when I go to taste it, I want to make sure that I have clean hands to remove the lid and that fermentation weight and then use a clean utensil to take out a piece of the onion and give it a try. What I'm looking for is a nice acidity. Beyond just the acidity of the lime juice, I'm really looking for that kind of classic pickle flavor. I'm also looking for the salt flavor to have subsided. And finally, I wanna pay attention to the texture of the onions and how firm or soft they are. It's partly a matter of personal preference, but for me, I have learned over time that I prefer to put my onions in the fridge while they're still just a bit firmer than I want them to be as a finished product. And there's a couple of reasons for this. As I mentioned before, the fermentation process is going to continue very slowly in the fridge. And so I wanna make sure that I have a little leeway to account for that. But the other reason is that, fair warning, freshly fermented onions have a bit of a funk to them, if you will, a bit of a smell. And it doesn't bother me too much, but I know my spouse isn't a huge fan of it. However, that funk, that smell will totally mellow out with time. So I have found that I like to make our pickled onions about four to six weeks sooner than I think we're actually gonna need them. So for us, when our jar gets a little less than half full, I'm gonna go ahead and start a new batch. So it will have plenty of time to sit in the fridge after it's done fermenting and mellow out to where we really enjoy it. So how do we like to use our pickled onions? As I mentioned before, they are incredibly versatile. The number one for us has gotta be tacos, particularly any meat that's real fatty and rich like carnitas really benefit from the nice bright acidity that pickled onions can bring. Along those same lines, burrito bowls are one of our faves that we put them on, or a plate of nachos, or even inside of a quesadilla. Similarly, they're great inside grilled cheese and other sandwiches as well. Pulled pork is a great one to add pickled onions to, as well as burgers and hot dogs, especially if you're someone that doesn't really like raw onion on your burger or hot dog, give pickled onions a try. We'll also put them on top of chili or other soups, as well as um, in a charcuterie board or on top of a great salad, like the buffalo chicken salad we had last night. They made a great addition to that. Seriously, we put them on almost everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped you to see that maybe fermentation doesn't have to be quite so scary. I know for me personally, it was a lot about figuring out the science behind what was actually going on in that jar so that I knew what I needed to do in order to keep myself and my family safe. And the book I mentioned earlier, Fermented Vegetables, the first two chapters do a really great job of explaining that science in an easy to understand way. So I'll leave a link to this down in the video description below. And I'll also make sure to include a link to the Mason Tops fermentation kit that I'm such a big fan of. So be sure to check it out. You might also wanna check out last year's onion harvest video that I mentioned earlier, or even this one about how to start a pantry where I talk about some of our favorite food preservation methods, including fermentation. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching and we hope to see you in our classroom again real soon.